Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Federal Liberal backbencher Sharman Stone has written to the Prime Minister urging him to reconsider the decision not to give taxpayer assistance to the fruit processing company SPC Ardmona. This followed a pointed outburst from Dr Stone who told the ABC that Mr Abbott was lying about worker entitlements at the troubled Shepparton plant. SPC's parent, Coca-Cola Amatil had asked for $25 million to help upgrade its plant, located within Dr Stone's northern Victorian electorate of Murray. Last week, the federal government said it would not help, arguing the company should renegotiate workplace conditions that were way in excess of the award. The Bureau of Meteorology reported this week that January rainfall had been below average across much of Queensland and down the east coast from Rockhampton to southern Victoria. Most of northern South Australia, southwest Western Australia and parts of Tasmania, southwestern New South Wales and central and northwestern Victoria had also experienced below average January rainfall. Monsoon watchers are now reportedly hoping for northern cyclones to bring rain and relief to drought affected areas down south soon. Australian farmer advocacy groups must change or die. This was a blunt conclusion arising from a research project carried out by the Australian Farm Institute during the past 12 months. Farmer advocacy groups were finding it increasingly difficult to attract members and were struggling to have their views heard by government, according to the Institute. During the past decade, Australia had been through a digital revolution that had permanently changed the way farmers communicated with the community and the media. There is growing speculation that Australian ice cream brand Peters could be for sale with dairy cooperative Murray Goulburn tipped to make a bid, according to Australian Food News. The Peters ice cream business is reportedly on the market after global food company Nestle sold the business to private equity firm Pacific Equity Partners in June 2012. Murray Goulburn is reportedly well placed to bid after it pulled out of the battle to buy Warnable Cheese and Butter and selling its WCB shares for around $93 million. The federal government must fight for the removal of trade barriers so that Australia can benefit from increased agricultural trade opportunities, the nation's peak farm lobby said this week. President of the National Farmers Federation, Brent Finlay, said the proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership would help grow trade as it entailed the complete removal of tariffs across all agricultural products and sectors. Australian farmers exported two-thirds of what they produced, earning the country around $38 billion this year. It was clear farming counterparts in New Zealand, Canada and the US also recognise the need to remove barriers. Australian wool growers are increasingly sharing innovations to improve productivity and reduce costs, according to Australian Wool Innovation. BestPrac, AWI's extension network for pastoral wool growers, has in the recent past profiled initiatives such as goat traps, grid gates and the use of electronic sheep technology. It has now announced the first outcomes of its accelerating rangeland innovation project. The rangeland initiative is one of this week's video features on the Digital Farm TV homepage. Finally this week, West Australian agribusinesses have a lot on their plate as they consider unprecedented interest from overseas investors. The West Australian reports that in many cases, offshore investment interest is unsolicited and spans everything from capital injections to joint ventures and outright purchases. WA Agribusiness was tooling up to assess whether prospective buyers were serious because potential overseas investors were seeking access to their books. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. Look forward to your company again next week. Bye.